Welcome to the series on um, performance management DIY, doing it yourself. Um, in this series, we'll be focusing on how to implement behaviorally anchored rating scale, popularly known as BARS. B A R S. So, for the purpose of learning, um, we'll be using um, a dummy organization, an online travel company. Now, the first thing you want to um, review when it comes to the deployment of BAS is to look at the corporate values, identify the corporate values of um, the organization. So for these are online travel company, the corporate values are partnership, whatever partnership means. In every organization, there's always a description of each of the values. If there is none, then it's important that um, um, you guys sit down to define your values. Um, transparency, uh, what's transparency? Integrity. Now, you can look at transparency and look at integrity and say, and they the same thing. But within the context of organization, um, it could mean different things. Uh, customer service. Now, because it's an online travel company, you, you one wouldn't um, argue as to, okay, why do they have customer service as one of their values? Um, accountability is also one of their values. You know, in this our online travel company, um, there are five values. So the next thing we want to do in setting up bars within an organization is to define and map these values. Okay, so in defining and um, mapping values, there are two distinct ways you can go about this. Is either you want to go um, the common approach or you want to bring some innovation to, to play within your organization. Now, the common approach is for people to define these values and also provide um, examples of acceptable behaviors. Now, once the values are defined, um, some sort of questionnaire or survey is built around it and uh, it is deployed across the organization irrespective of portfolio or department or a division in which um, individuals belong within the organization. Now, the innovative part you can bring to it is to look at, um, first look at um, the values like what you have in the second table. Look at all of these values, um, map which one you want to um, test within, assess within um, a particular department. Um, once you are done with this, you will now pick, for instance, what we have here is partnership. Now, for our online travel company, partnership is being mapped to finance and um, affiliate sales. So, what will happen in this context is to define what partnership really means within the understanding of the organization with, as far as the behavior the organization wants to uh, uh, project and define partnership within the context of finance and affiliate sales so that those in finance and um, affiliate sales can understand what is expected of them as far as behavioral dispositions or display of behavior, acceptable behavior within the organization. Now, transparency is being plotted across all the departments. You might want to go the route of um, um, tailoring questions on transparency to each of these departments uh, because at the end of the day what you're trying to achieve is to ensure that um, what you're testing for are peculiar to portfolios or departments or you can decide to go by just define um, what each of these values are come up with um, uh, tailored questions to each of them to test indeed if uh, people are living up to those values and um, you have it um, done as expected. Uh, so the next thing you want to do once you are done with uh, mapping and defining of your values, the next thing you want to do is to map assessors. We'll discuss that now. Alright, mapping of assessors. Um, so when it comes to mapping assessors, there are some things you need to uh, be mindful of. You want to map people who work with each other people who uh, interact with uh, each other, uh, someone whose uh, output serves as another person's input. Uh, that is how you want to map um, uh, assessors. You don't want to go the route of blanket um, mapping of assessors because if someone, because we're talking about behavior here, if someone just observes from the far or 
um, probably based on just one-time interaction and you decide that oh this person should be suitable for assessing an individual then the whole uh, essence of this um, exercise would have been defeated so um, what is common when it comes to um, assessment or mapping assessors within um, bars is to have uh, supervisors assess individuals while individuals assess themselves um, if you look at this closely at the end of the day it is more of what the supervisor says about the individual that gets picked now there is a lot of subjectivity in what comes out from this another um, Assess, um, pool of assessors that you can look at is um, supervisor and the peer. That's peer to the individual. So the individual assesses himself, the peer assesses the, supervis um, the individual, the supervisor assesses the, the individual. Now, yeah, are you going to get some level of um, uh, objectivity? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, but that's also one way of um, uh, mapping assessors. The next is to have individual assess himself or herself. Then you have the supervisor assessing the individual. You have a uh, peer assessing. You have um, subordinate also uh, assessing. Now, this is getting close to what we refer to as a um, 360 degree appraisal system. Um, the next year is to also bring the customer into the cycle. Um, customer could be internal or external, depending on the, the job portfolio or the portfolio of the individual being assessed. Um, so, you there are some things you also need to be very careful with when it comes to the 360 degree. We'll discuss more on this when we get to bars nuggets, the nuggets on bars. So, now right now, let's discuss um, rating skills. Okay, so this is the um, rating scale. Now there are different kind of rating scale, ranging from um, three point system to five point system, some ten. I mean, name them. So it depends on which of um, these um, point system you want to deploy within your organization. The first year is the Linkert scale, which is one to five. Um, strongly disagree to strongly agree. There is um, um, one to three, which is the three point system, which is on acceptability of um, performance or display of behavior or whatever it is. And uh, three, which um, um, probably being a champion in terms of living the, the behavior or the values of um, the company. And then the five point, which also is from one unsatisfactory to outstanding performance or depiction of. Uh, values so you need to decide on, on which one you want to deploy as far as um, behaviorally anchored rating skill is concerned um, for this you will need to do a lot of tweaking I for one would go with the linkard skill which is um, one to five strongly disagree to strongly agree because what you're trying to uh, evaluate or assess your yeah, uh, behaviors so the next uh, thing we'll be discussing will be the grading grid. Okay, the grading grid. Now, what the grading grid does for you is post all ratings. Um, you will be required for every individual to carry out um, submission and calculations. Now, when you're done with this, the next thing you want to do is to see where the individual sits within your uh, grid. Um, so. Um, per adventure the person um, scores maybe 50 something percent you come to your grid and look for okay where is 50 something percent seated so on the grid on the, uh, here in front of on the screen you have uh, 51 percent to 70 percent fairly satisfactory that's where this person uh, sits um, so but for me I think because you're you 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 evaluating or assessing behavior I would tilt towards positive and negative in the sense that um, you can say um, scores below 80% um, will be a negative while 81% and above will be a positive. Now when you do that it gives you an idea of what percentage of people are actually leaving the values of your organization 
to the degree in which is uh, it's expected you can also dig further by going in into which of the values is suffering the most so that you can think of tailored solution to address uh, the gaps this is very very important now let's say everything has been done and um, you need to talk about okay carrying out the appraisal itself and um, also um, working on uh, calculating the performance so we'll be discussing the uh, uh, calculating the performance after now so let's quickly calculate the performance of um, our travel consultant that goes by the name Jane don't mind the, the image um, so what we have here is the um, appraisal template for bars that has been created or you can have access to to the um, edited templates and all other templates on this um, course um, so let's assume that after all the assessment so you have different sections here customer service accountability partnership transparency integrity so the assumption is that probably um, all of if you go by the way of mapping um, the values probably all of these values were being mapped to the department which um, Jane belongs to or maybe it's just a um, generic approach whatever the case is at the end of the day um, after all computation was carried out um, Jane um, scored can be categorized under positive um, display of values now before I go, I go further on that let me quickly point to you the way or the process for calculating the the, the overall score so all you want to track is to track um, the total score and um, uh, divide that by the multiple um, maximum score and multiply by 100 to derive the percentage now in deriving the percentage let's say Jane now is a positive now yes it's good that Jane is a positive but again you might be interested to know okay where what aspect of the values can we say that Jane needs some serious improvement so that is when you go back into the 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 assessment report itself and say okay oh okay Jane has done very well under accountability under partnership under transparency under integrity but well, customer service Jane has performed woefully so we need to come up with intervention to help uh, Jane in living our values as far as customer service is concerned now once you're done with this calculating and all of those you want to go into um, consequences because for every performance there is also a need for um, uh, consequences it's also important to state here that uh, often time um, behaviorally and code rating skill uh, is not a standalone it's always in combination with other uh, appraisal tools that um, probably focus on technical job or technical job kpis so let's quickly go into um, outcome management okay with outcome management you want to tell people that um, if you don't leave the values of the organization to a particular degree to a particular level this is what will happen to you uh, if you leave it and you are exceptional in living in the values of the organization maybe one of those things will be recognition um, making you a, a, a an ambassador of a particular value i mean whatever it is that would work within your organization so what we have here will be a performance grid um, you can always get to tweak this but again there needs to be alignment if you go back to how we came uh, from the start of this course in building your framework now when you're building your framework you need to tie in a lot of things which include some of the things we've covered here so um, with this just sit down with um, the the other stakeholders to derive uh, what will happen to people who are a positive what will happen to people who are a negative if that is um, a route you want to you want to uh, go by um, so I mean that is what uh, an outcome management is so let's quickly cover the nuggets as far as bars is concerned 
Okay, so let's quickly talk about um, the editable templates uh, on bars that uh, it's available on femiojomo.com. Um, so some of the templates, or let me say all the templates that um, have been discussed or tools that have been discussed within this course, you can always have access to them on uh, femiojomo.com. And plus other uh, templates, they are there available to you. All right, the nuggets. Um, it is, as far as behaviorally anchored rating scale is concerned, it is more about behavior and how to shape it. So don't get it twisted. Um, it might be very difficult for you to use bars for any other thing. Um, the outcome of bars is oftentimes consumed with subjectivity. Remember when, when I, we're discussing the bit of uh, multi raters uh, where you have a um, peer and um, uh, supervisor appraising an individual oftentimes there is always elements of subjectivity so you need to watch out for this uh, multi appraisal works best in ensuring some degree of objectivity is achieved so um, I would say try as much as possible to walk away from just having uh, the supervisor appraising an individual um, think of other uh, people that can um, be a part of the process um, it is best executed using a 360 degree system no, no doubt about that however you need to be mindful of the pitfalls of 360 degree uh, so 360 degree has got some uh, I mean a number of pitfalls one of them will be uh, organizational maturity I mean if your organization is not that matured so uh, to take in the outcomes or feedbacks from a 360 degree appraisal then the essence will have been defeated because more often than not you find people trying to look for who was the person that appraised me who said this about me and things like that so you need to be very very careful you need to test that yes the organization is there to 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 to, to enjoy the the advantages of 360 degree and um, another pitfall is that um, when it comes to the 360 degree um there is a volume of uh, appraisals going on because you can have one individual who is a supervisor uh, appraising as many people as possible. Uh, you can have individuals appraising as many people as possible because of the network of um, input output um, um, work. Uh, so, um, in deploying the 360 degree, um, you don't want to go the route of paper-based assessment, except you have a pool of people in HR that can that can own it, and I doubt that. So, uh, you need to think through very well when it comes to the 360 degree in uh, carrying out uh, any kind of appraisal, and uh, within this context, behavioral uh, 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 and code rating skill. So, on that note, this brings us to the end of this course, and I hope you've learned one or two things. And um, I'm encouraging you to go uh, put your learning into action. So all the best.